So we're here to have a little chat about the Drupal South Committee and uh, this, we just thought we'd prepare some information for anyone who wanted to find out about the committee and what we're doing and why we're here. Um, so there's a bit of self-justification in this, but also we want to be transparent about, about what we're doing and how, how it's running uh, and the things we're trying to achieve at the moment. So um, primarily this committee exists uh, for one purpose. This is the primary purpose of the committee and that's um, to ensure the continuity of Drupal South. Um, we want to make it easier for people to run these events, uh, we want to make sure they get run, and we want to make sure that um, people aren't reinventing the wheel every year. But alongside that, um, we see this as an opportunity to expand uh, lots of different um, uh, aspects of uh, Drupal adoption in Australia and New Zealand, um, and we're sort of trying to cherry pick uh, ideas that people think are good. Um, uh, and where there are opportunities. So um, a lot of this for us has been about listening to what people have to say as well. So sometimes we might come out and say, we think this, but you know, if you guys tell us something else, then we're gonna listen to that and move in that direction as well. Um, all right, so why does this committee exist? What is the purpose of the Drupal South Committee? Well, previously when you wanted to run uh, one of these events in Australia or New Zealand, you would usually go to Linux Australia and you'd say, hey, I've got this idea for an event, can I have some money or can you, you know, spot me some cash till we get some ticket sales, please? Uh, and they go, yeah, sure, right. Um, and they might consult with uh, previous organisers who we called ghosts and those people would you know, usually have had some uh, involvement in the pitch anyway and that would all be accepted and you'd, you'd go and do it. But then the next time you wanted to do it, the same thing would happen again and the people would come along and have no idea what they were doing um, and it would be really hard work. So. The Drupal South Steering Committee sits between Linux Australia and these event teams. Um, the Steering Committee reports to Linux Australia on uh, budget uh, and event success, so we actually have a, like a, an official Linux Australia capacity there. Um, and then individual event teams report into us on their events and how they're going and we help them be a success. You'll notice that the ghosts are missing from this um, uh, slide. That's not really deliberate, it's just that uh, the ghosts were, were kind of necessary in the past. It didn't function without those ghosts being there, whereas it can continue now in a bit more of a structured way. Um, and we're also trying to foster better cross-event um, participation as well, so that in any given year there might be some people on one event team who are going to go on and do other ones in the future so they get some experience. Uh, or, you know, people who come back and do them again. All right, so the steering committee, subcommittee of Linux Australia. Um, it came out of a six month consultation period led by ghosts. Um, it was formed in 2019 following a community vote. It has five members and we're on rolling two year terms. Um, so we have a, I haven't put it up because it's a bit confusing, but we have a, um, a schedule to show when individual uh, committee members will roll off and be re-elected and the idea is that we hold uh, one election, the next one would probably be early 2020 and that, that elects the next five people and they roll on slowly. So the, the purpose of those, um, those overlapping rolling terms uh, is to ensure that there's always continuity on the committee. You don't get a wholly fresh committee coming in not having any context or, or knowing what's going on. But um, in any case, the whole committee gets re-elected uh, next year. So, current committee, should all be in the room, down the front, uh, Owen Lansbury, um, elected as chair, uh, Pamela Barone, um, event liaison and a code of conduct reporting officer, Tom Toogood, um, government liaison and a code of conduct reporting officer, uh, Nicole Kirsch, treasurer, and myself, Christopher Skeen, and I do corporate liaison and marketing. So how does the committee function? What do we do on a, you know, day-to-day -day basis? Uh, essentially, we're, we're running this with a monthly meeting. Um, those haven't been public yet, but I think we're open to that I idea of having public meetings. Yeah, so if you're interested in attending the meetings, let us know and we'll make sure you, you're included. Um, we communicate a lot through Slack, through the Drupal South Slack, and that's somewhere you can find us. Um, and we also are trying to post regularly on groups.drupal.org and the Drupal South website. Um, and I think going forward as we sort out what the hell we're doing, because we, we often don't know ourselves, um, we'll be doing more um, mail-outs as well through the mailing list to keep people up to date. 
So we have a few current activities, um, and these are based on some strategic priorities that we worked through and also our discussions with people, so I'll run through these pretty quick. Uh, first of all, we're coordinating, coordinating the annual event program. Um, now that is primarily Drupal South, but it also includes Drupal Gov, uh, and it may include one or two other little events as well, depending on where we think there are opportunities. Uh, we're doing some community initiatives. Um, so an example of this is some of the things we discussed in the BOF uh, at 11 o'clock today around meetups. So um, we're trying to find ways to improve the communication and knowledge sharing between meetups and see where the opportunities for those meetups are to work together. One of the interesting ideas that came out this morning, for example, was um, uh, like shared regional meetups via video hookup, for example. There was some interest in that. Um, provide some common tools where they're useful for those meetup groups um, and potentially assist with uh, funding for um, you know, smaller items should you need them, event or venue hire or pizza or, or you know, whatever, meetup. We're looking at annual sponsor packages as a way of providing um, for a more uh, continuous um, and less burdensome method of funding Drupal South. So instead of not really knowing how many events are going to crop up during the year and being asked maybe to fund all of them as a sponsor, you can have one opportunity to uh, engage with Drupal South um, and then whatever we run comes out of that. So that's, that's good for Drupal South in the sense that we have a more predictable funding model um, and it's potentially good for sponsors in that we can offer value in different places as well. Um, and, and reduce the number of times you have to sit there and stare at a, uh, a sponsor proposal. Anyway, we're still talking about that one. Um, we're doing quite a lot of data collection stuff currently. We're trying to get a, a better understanding of the current market and what's going on. So we recently ran the Drupal sponsor, sponsor survey in Australia and that fed into the huge response, fed into the BOF that was held um, yesterday. Uh, and we are about to run a Drupal user survey. It was meant to be ready for this event because I was sick. It's not, so it'll come soon. But that is a survey, hopefully, of any and all Drupal users we can find um, in Australia and New Zealand and find out what they're doing and, and some of their interests. Uh, we also have a growth strategy. Now, this is a bunch of various things that we've... Um, been poking at and looking at in different ways, and I've put them together on this slide called growth strategy. We don't actually have a growth strategy, we just have some things that we're looking at. So um, some of these ideas are uh, engaging a local marketing specialist to do a little bit of, of um, Drupal marketing for us. Um, we're looking at refreshing the website. Um, we've talked about one day decision maker summits, like a CTO summit. Um, and similarly, we're looking at uh, maybe where we could possibly run uh, like a Drupal booth at a, at a related event. Um, now, some of the strategy around that relates to why we would do that. So, for example, are we going to places where we expect to be um, putting Drupal up against um, other systems like Adobe? You know, are, are, we, are we competing on behalf of our, uh, our constituents? Or are we going out to uh, recruit um, people into intern programs, for example. So the, the reasoning behind that might depend on where we think the strategic uh, priority is, and that comes from what you tell us. Um, we're also developing a content calendar, uh, and we're, we're thinking about how we can create content, where we can create content and be valuable. Obviously, we're all volunteers. We have a limited amount of time. We're not going to be spinning out loads of content, but maybe a little bit here and there where it's strategically useful. Um, we have regional uh, initiatives which we are looking at. One is um, the potential of running a Splash Awards in Asia Pac. Um, and another is how we can share materials and events, or not, sorry, not events, materials and speakers with other um, Asia Pac events. So um, the Australian New Zealand Drupal group is by far the most active. Um, group in this part of the world outside of India. Uh, India has a very active group as well, but pretty much every other country is quite small. So, you know, potentially um, helping those areas uh, with some sort of shared stuff is going to be useful too. Uh, and the last one on there, work towards facilitating DrupalCon Asia Pacific with the Drupal Association. Might be a bit of a pipe dream or, or a wish list item, but certainly we're, we know we're able to deliver um, very high quality events 
um, consistently uh, and with a high level of organisation. So that might be a possibility of, of rebranding one of these as a, a DrupalCon. Um, public sector initiatives. So we've incorporated this year the running of DrupalGov into the Drupal South schedule. DrupalGov um, has always been something that's run a bit ad hoc. Uh, I've um, kind of kept custodianship of it, but other people have come along and done it. Um, it's becoming a, a full part of the Drupal South uh, schedule at this point, though at the moment we haven't worked out how often or where we might run it. We just know that um, uh, we think it makes sense to do it that way. Uh, and we've got uh, Tom, who's our public sector liaison as well, um, so it's his job to, uh, to reach out there. Um, corporate initiatives, this is about talking to um, corporates using Drupal and also agencies to some extent. Um, uh, we haven't done a whole lot here, but the user survey is part of that. <clears throat> All right, so how can we help you? How can the committee, what can we do for, for people who are interested in um, being involved? Um, primarily outside of running the events and organising the events, uh, we provide support for camps, meetups, and other local events. So we talked about that a bit already. Um, we are uh, looking at ways to market and share marketing around um, Drupal events. So um, I think just this morning we talked about putting up a shared uh, channel in the Drupal South Slack. So if anyone's promoting any Drupal events or any of their own events that are Drupal related locally and they want a bit more um, wide press for that, they can share it in the Drupal South Slack uh, and we'll retweet it or push it through Facebook or whatever, just to amplify your message a bit. Um, and less useful for you guys, I think, but you know, if you're looking for training or services or other providers, then we can, we can help people find those. Uh, useful dates. Okay, the next steering committee elections, according to our calendar, are July 2020. So that's the first thing. If you're interested in standing for the committee, um, that's likely when the next elections will be. Uh, and the next Drupal South request for proposals, um, probably going to be spring 2020. We haven't actually discussed this, but that seems to be the logical um, date based on our current calendar. So what do we look for when we um, uh, do a Drupal South request for proposals? We've done this once already, and Owen, Owen ran that. Do you want to talk briefly about that? That's all right. <laughs> I was actually trying to see when the uh, keynote was on. Um, who would be interested in running a Drupal South? Yeah? What's your name? Nigel. Nigel. Nice to meet you. Um, so I think, as Chris said, uh, we view this committee's role as supporting local teams to run regional events um, without as much self-sacrifice as may have been required in the past. And I think credit to the team here, they did do quite a lot of self-sacrifice because they were already in motion by the time that we formed the steering committee. Um, but one of the ideas that we've put forward, which one of the next organisers has already jumped onto, is to budget for a, um, an actual event facilitator slash coordinator to do a lot of the kind of grunt work of printing badges and doing ticket refunds and, and that type of thing. So um, we do want to elevate the local organisers into primarily a strategic role of um, content and program formats uh, and liaising with great keynote speakers and running really interesting workshops and, and that type of thing, as opposed to being the ones that are actually um, pressing the print button on tickets and that kind of thing. So I think in, in terms of um, future events, we still want to have a, a back and forth between New Zealand and Australia as much as possible, and that might be on a year-for-year -year basis. It might be in Australia for two years and in New Zealand for one year. We'll just kind of take it as it comes. Um, and I think the considerations are um, great venue, location that's relatively easy to get to. I know that all the Kiwis had to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning to get here. This is not totally ideal, um, but I think something like Hobart um, counteracts that in terms of it's such an amazing location. So location's key, um, and then the big focus is on managing speakers and that type of thing. Does that kind of cover what you wanted me to talk about? I suppose so, yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. Do I mean, you if you are interested at all, um, come and talk to us and we'll, like, give you more information, I guess. Yeah. 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 Any questions on events? No? Um, Is the location of the Drupal South uh, dependent on who's organising it? Like um, if they're in there? So ideally you would have people on the ground in the location that you're running it, unless we run one in Fiji, for example. <laughs> I'm on the ground. It's definitely a possibility. Direct flights from most capital cities. Um, yeah, so, I mean, that's, that's definitely a consideration. I think... The learning from uh, the Drupal Association globally was that they really could not run successful DrupalCons in Europe um, unassisted by a local team on the ground, so that's why they've gone with that model of having Coyone. Um, but there might be some ideas that come out, like a Fiji or some kind of really interesting location where it's like, that makes total sense, let's do something like that. Um, the other thing I'll mention around events is um, Chris mentioned kind of summits and uh, in one of the boss we started talking about actual focused dev days and, and those types of things. I think the model that we're most likely to go with for that would be um, a professional facilitator for those events with some local presence, again on content, expertise, that type of thing. So say we're running a Drupal dev day in Sydney, Murray and the meetup organisers may play a key role in that in terms of speakers and running workshops and, and that type of thing. So um, the message is that these events are where we all come together, but then I think there's a lot of opportunity for individual events that are targeting specific audiences that um, either don't get a huge amount out of coming to a big group event like this, or have really specific needs. So people that are new to Drupal, um, really highly experienced developers, decision makers, all of that type of thing. We want to be able to have forums for those people to be able to interact. Mm. I should stop talking, hey? Yeah, we, so we, I think our aim is to pick a good team, regardless of the location, um, and then make sure that they've got a good venue for the kind of event they want to run. Uh, and we're open to the kind of events that people want to run. Um, obviously, the only thing we really can't do is, is run the event. So if you come to us and go, this event is really cool, I want you to do one, we probably won't do it. But if you come along and say, this event is really cool and I want you to help me do one, then we'd be very open to it. Yeah, I mean, a great example would be run a Women in Drupal event. No. Okay, don't run a Dr <laughs> Women in Drupal event. <laughs> if you chose to. No, I think yeah, sure. I'm nearly done. Um, uh, so how can you talk to us? Well, you can talk to us here, um, and if you can, you can collar us at any point in time. Um, you can reach us through the email address, uh, say hello at drupalsouth.org. You can use the contact form. You can email us personally. I think most of you probably know us anyway. Um, and if you are engaged in any kind of uh, local Drupal community coordination, you can get into the Drupal South Slack if you're not already on it and, um, and participate in there too. So we do a lot of kind of coordination and organisation there. Um, and you can get an invite from the Australian Drupal Slack if you just ask or just ping one of us. Uh, finally, and this is really important, we do handle code of conduct reports for our events and we follow basically the Drupal code of conduct. Um, we do have a copy of this adapted for Drupal South on our own website. Um, uh, by adapted I mean we put the word South after the word Drupal most of the time. Um, and we have two dedicated code of conduct officers, Pam and Tom. Uh, and when a uh, code of conduct report comes in to that email address, they see it uh, and w the rest of the committee doesn't. So um, that's a uh, we're trying to follow the best practice that we can for this. Um, and I think, have, have both of you done the training or just? Just me. Just Pam. So Pam's also done code of conduct training as well. Do you want to talk about that at all? Or? Yeah, sure. There's a um, company called Otter Tech that the Drupal Association has engaged with to um, run a workshop in how to handle code of conduct incidents. And I um, participated in that, I think it was last week. And it was really interesting. I was a bit skeptical, but um, it was really informative. It just kind of talked about empathy when talking to both the reporter and the reported person and um, you know strategies for dealing with tricky situations and ways to mitigate things and just kind of how to treat 
you know, first complaint, then sort of escalating, and, and how to kind of, how to consider something resolved, or, you know, just, it, anyway, it was really interesting. So um, I did that with a couple of Drupal Association people, and um, yeah, it was well worth it, I think. We haven't had any complaints at this event, though, so all good. Yeah, I know. <laughs> One yeah. more party to go. So we, t we take this very seriously, and we have, as a committee, handled um, uh, a couple of complaints in the last 12 months. So, um, you know, it's been a bit of a learning process for us, too, but we do take it seriously. So, uh, yeah, good Q&A. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, hi. I'm Heike. <laughs> um, now, I'm hanging out um, on these events um, since uh, Drupal South, I don't even know it was called Drupal South, in Wellington. And uh, in 2014, I've organized code sprints. I've organized the Drupal cards. I've done lots of things. And what I experienced, I wasn't in Canberra last year, sorry. Um, but I've, I've, can you just, can't you oh, just all hear me? Recording. Oh, sorry, you record me. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> you can complain about the code of conduct later if I go overboard. Okay. Um, so, uh, I know most of your faces. Maybe after all of these years, you know my face. <laughs> um, this is my first problem. We are talking to each other all the time. Like, it's the same people all the time. Um, now, I was sitting in the keynote yesterday, and we can think about this keynote, uh, we can think about the keynote, um, whatever we want, but I was under the impression that she's preaching to the choir. But when I look at this, I think she isn't. Because if we want to have, sorry, that's really getting me here, but if we want to have days like women in Drupal, or Drupal Deaf Days, or Drupal South, or Drupal whatever, then we just create silos, yeah? We need to collaborate. I mean, this wasn't rocket science, what she said yesterday. It was like very like a stereotype, and I thought like, oh, okay, I actually think that the coder is the hipster. He has more tattoos. So um, I'm, just, I'm just like, I don't understand why we, why we are not trying. So for example, just a tiny example, in Wellington in 2014, we were just running a, a totally Drupal, um, a code sprint for Drupal who had never seen Drupal, yeah? They weren't sitting there just around the tables, not talking to each other, they got these, it was like a game board and they could play the game and move around and, and stuff like that. And it worked next to your sprint at this time, you yeah? like you can do your thing. And we can make room for this. And then, um, yeah, so how, how, how do we actually get out of this silo? It is about Drupal, and I don't want to make it not about Drupal, but can't it be about more? I don't know. I mean, we want to, isn't, isn't what we want to do in the end, do great websites? I don't, no, I, 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 I guess I don't know what, yeah, I, I must I, when you say the silos and you don't think we should do dev days and you don't think we should do no i don't oh is that not what you're saying i guess i i don't completely know if i know what angle you're taking and i i have thought a lot about this over the past few months so <laughs> drupal south will always be the coming together it's our signature event it's the opportunity for us to all see what's happening in different parts of our community and ecosystem um, using Drupal. Uh, a lot of feedback that we have had, though, from boffs that we've run over the last couple of days uh, with sponsors and with community organisers. Who else did we run a boff with? Um, so some of the feedback is if I'm a really experienced developer and I'm coming to Drupal South, I'm not necessarily learning things because things are usually at a relatively high level and not doing deep dives. I might get at that at the sprint um, if I'm participating in that. But um, I think something that Murray said before in the boff was that uh, when they get together in meetups, it's a lot of people who are very experienced who sit around and just talk about deep Drupal problems. If you put someone who's a beginner, new to Drupal, who's not a coder, 
who's uh, a business decision maker, etc., they're not going to get much out of those conversations, but the really deep developers do. And so having a forum for those we view as being a, p a potential... Yeah, I'm not against yeah. code sprints. Yeah, so... I just want non-developers go to code sprints. Yeah, so I, I think the... I want non-developers go to code, spr code yeah. sprints. I've been on a lot of code sprints. So, so just to um, go back to what I first said, Drupal South will be that, but mm. we have identified that there's really key audiences that we're not reaching at the moment or not having a dialogue with um, whose meet needs aren't necessarily met. Um, and so another example would be business decision makers aren't necessarily coming to Drupal South. They view it as, oh, it's too techy, everyone's just talking about coding. Um, so there's definitely an opportunity for us to facilitate uh, a decision maker summit where we're talking about Drupal at a very high level as a digital experience management platform or whatever, um, where we're actually positioning Drupal as a real option for them to consider when they're talking about their next budgets. So one thing that I have said repeatedly over the last few days is there's no one-size-fits-all approach. Um, we've got a lot of ideas. We can only initiate so many of them. And one of the processes that we've gone through is to prioritise based on need, impact and effort. So if something has a clear need, it's going to have a high impact and it's a relatively low effort for us to implement, they're the types of things that we'll start doing early on. Um, things that have less need, low impact, but are quite complex, we're probably not going to spend time on. Does that kind of answer your question? Um, I still, you know, like I do, I do a lot of consulting. This still looks very from the inside out to me, and not from the outside in. Yeah, um, I'm just wondering, even even with the business people, if the problem is, um, if the problem is um, that um, they don't feel that this is something they should go to, why isn't there a business forum that just happens at the same time that Drupal South happens, yep. so that they can actually see that we are not all nerds? Yeah, so that, that's Nothing against nerds, nerds are cool. That's definitely an option. Um, they did run something like that in Seattle, where they had a, a separate mm. business track, um, and my view is that it was quite a big failure. So it was really siloed off from the rest of the event. There really wasn't a lot of interaction. The content that was being talked about there really wasn't um, that well attended. So we can try different approaches, see what works. We're totally open to experimenting, but um, I think just getting back to what I originally said, Drupal South will be an opportunity to bring a lot of people together, mm. but there's opportunities for us to be really talking more directly to people that might not otherwise come to this event. Yeah, and I, I think also um, this year there was a little experimentation, so it's largely the same format, but um, like Vlad just decided to run some workshops and that mm. actually he wasn't sure whether anyone was going to show up and lots of people did show up. Uh, this is always the same, yeah. So that was well. a huge success <laughs> and I think um, his feedback was we should definitely keep yeah. doing that because it's a way of attracting people mm, that might mm, not mm. otherwise come. So I think also um, part of it is like, if you feel strongly that there should be a business day at Dr the next Drupal South, then, you know, just kind of start no, the no, conversation. I, I, and this, was, this was just Owen's example of what he wants to silo, and I just said, what, whatever you want to silo, I don't think it's a good idea to take it away from the synergy of this event. So we just basically, you know, like there's only so much attention and so much synergy in something, and if you split those things, the synergy stuff, things happening, people no, getting I know, re... But I'm, but I'm just saying the, co the conference is... It's, organized by an organizing team that are all volunteers and all, all bring yeah, their yeah, own totally, ideas. So totally. if, if, you know, if we decide that running a business day, like, to be honest with you, I think getting those types to fly to Hobart or to fly to wherever it may yeah. be is a bit tricky. So maybe we start with running one in one of the major cities, see how it goes. Or again, if, you know, if, if the people who are organizing the next one feel that there's a big business community that might be interested in that, just run one. But, but the thing is that, you know, Campbell and his team didn't have the bandwidth to add another thing. That's why, like I said, Vladimir came in and said, I want to run a workshop. He ran the workshop. We no, made no, the space I'm for him. No, I'm not looking back. I'm really just looking. I, I have no complaints here. Like, yeah. No, I know. I'm saying, though, I'm saying that it's, it's not about us telling the committee, the, the organizing teams what to do. It's about the organizing teams doing what they have the capacity to do and coming up with ideas and us helping yeah. them achieve those. But we're not here to tell the 
t the cities and mm, the teams, mm, mm, what they have to do and what format they have mm, to meet. Mm. We, we, so that, I mean, I think when you said it's inside out rather than outside in, ideally we are having a bit of outside each time. Like, you know, Campbell's relatively new to the community. He came to Canberra to learn how it all worked and learn the ropes. And um, I think he brought a fresh perspective. Mm. So I think that, yeah, it's, n it's really definitely not us trying to tell the community tell whoever that this is how it has to be or this is what we want it's about us finding out what the community wants and then having the the framework to support it mm. more than that well that's how I I hope it works out mm. <laughs> it's only new but mm. that's what I hope happens yeah okay That's exactly what we're sort of trying to achieve, just to have a bit of a framework so it's yeah. easier for other organizers. And then if you decide to do a business day or do a women in tech or, or do an event, then at least there's templates you can use to make it easier for you. Because a lot of our companies invest a lot of time into us for organizing events. Um, so I think if we can re reduce that time, that would be, I think that's sort of the ideal. Yeah. I mean, I mean, one of the things we've got to look at as well, I still remember that decision of actually running Drupal South in a weekday, you know, way back when. And, and we're actually really privileged to be able to be here on a Friday. You know, it's a work day um, on, a, you know, another city. Um, our work allows us to do that. And so a lot of these smaller events are, are critical to building this community because there's still, what, 270 here, which are, you know, really lucky, but there's a lot more in Australia and New Zealand. So we've got to have, all, you know, we've got to build this community and make sure we're all inclusive there. But um, like you were saying, with non-coders going to code sprint events, I was in Amsterdam, I think it was one of the first ones they did it, but they had a huge um, section of the sprint day dedicated to non-developers. Yeah. And it was really, really successful. Yeah. So, I mean, that's something we can, we can do here um, and then be guided by, um, you know, what's happening in the, in the bigger community yeah. as well. Yeah. I, don't want to, I don't want to steal the whole discussion, but one more thing, um, and I'm sorry, I totally got misunderstood this when Owen said that we are going to do this. I think what you should, or oh, this is just a suggestion, feedback, I will send it via email. Um, if we do something like this, it should be like there should be nothing else going on. Don't you want to talk to everybody? Like, shouldn't this like for, shouldn't this like more be a, of a kind of a panel thing? It is Everyone, a panel. Everyone's invited, but no one turned up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I saw, I saw stuff that you want to work with the Drupal Association and Drupal Cons and all of this. But what do you see as your other opportunities to just not make this between us all the time? Like, well, how do we get more people? I know we are. Do you want me to answer this one yeah, first? Um, so the last few months have been this kind of broad spread of ideas of where should our focus go. And I think it's, it's come down to um, there's a Drupal product awareness component to what we need to do. Um, so whether we're um, promoting Drupal into other open source communities, into commercial um, environments, so whether we're actually kind of running a generic Drupal sponsored booth at a key event, that type of thing, to raise product awareness. Um, and the Drupal Association is also putting a huge amount of work around that. So they've got a dedicated marketing director. There's a lot of work being done around Drupal product marketing that we can all leverage. Um, another big component is uh, reaching people that aren't using Drupal. Um, so we've done a lot of talking and a couple of boffs around how do we reach uh, university students and demonstrate that there's a clear career path 
for Drupal implementing things like internship programs that they can move into, more consolidated training materials and uh, ecosystem for independent providers to do Drupal training. Um, time and there are a couple people a couple more people who want to ask questions but I will say that's it's on the radar of things we want to address bringing more people in we don't have the answer but it's one of the things that we definitely want to do because we don't enjoy just staring at each other <laughs> <laughs> and then the final thing that I'll note is that we know that there's a huge number of Drupal users um, who are now working embedded in large organizations that we have no contact with as a community um, because those people turn up for their day job, they use Drupal either as content editors, they might even be developers, and it's just what they use at work. Um, and I think there's, like I said, there's a different way of communicating with that type of audience in terms of content that would attract them um, that's not based on a sense of, it's the Drupal community, it's um, I'm doing something with Drupal that's advancing my own career. Um, and by exposing them to Drupal and the community through those outreach programs, which are yet to be defined, <laughs> um, you're then broadening the opportunity of people then starting to engage. And that might be at a co-contribution level, it might be attendance at events like this, et cetera, et cetera. So, did you want to go? I've forgotten your name. Guy. Hi, Guy. Um, it just goes back to what Tom was saying, I think, about the code sprint, and it just triggered a thought in my mind that I didn't notice a coders lounge. I know there was the quiet room, but it's just occurred to me that a coders lounge has been absent from this year and maybe last year as well. And I don't know if that's a facilities thing or... Uh, yeah, it usually is. So um, the number of rooms that are available in any given venue determines essentially what, what can be done there. I don't know. Yeah, we only had one bathroom. I, I don't know if there's... There were other ones here. Simon's going to answer that question. I do have a quick thing is that I feel like it's, it's often a case of how much space we've got. We've actually got a lot of space here. There's actually a lot of places people can break out. So sometimes it's something that's practical if the venue is kind of squishy. Um, but, but no, I actually have a follow-up question. And that was, that, sorry, the, just the, the fact that it's not necessarily just coders involved in, in this process anymore and that's the DA is really pushing that that fact is that um, they want to make it more welcoming so I can I'm going to do some photography outside again but I wanted to make a comment that um, it's really what I've really found really interesting is that Campbell's journey from two years ago going to Drupal South Auckland to running a conference has been quite incredible I haven't we haven't been overly involved in pushing him in terms of guiding him other than the questions he's asked. So a lot of the support he's got has been from the existing community. Um, so sometimes I feel like the steering committee is just about formalising what we're already doing pretty well. I don't know how we're doing it well, but we're doing it pretty well. So um, yeah, so I like what I hear about we don't need to make it top down. We want to we want to get the Campbells doing what they feel passionate about and bringing what they bring into it, but then saying, I need help. I need help for this, this, and this, who's done it before, and how we connect those people up. And now we have money for it, too. So when you guys have ideas and you need help, we can actually help with money now, rather than just like cheerleading. <laughs> uh, so I'll be really quick. First of all, I just want to say, I, I acknowledge that you guys are all volunteering in your own time, so thank you for doing that. Um, and, I, and I wish, if I knew more of the people who were doing the groundwork, like Campbell, that we could say that to them as well, because I, I feel like that's a thankless job. Um, and probably hasn't received enough recognition. Um, my question, however, is why Linux Australia? What value is there in that relationship versus being, I would have assumed that that would have been a, a Drupal Association uh, top level sort of relationship. Sure, that's a good question. Um, there's a number of reasons. Uh, firstly, Linux Australia actually does a really good job of supporting open source communities in general. Um, it supports us, it supports WordCamps, PyCon, um, Laravel, a whole, whole bunch of stuff. And what it does is it provides uh, uh, financial governance, insurance, banking, um, and, and also a giant pool of cash in case somebody has a massive screw up and, and messes up an event. I think they have, a, they have basically a slush fund that sits there um, for emergencies. That's, you know, 
So they're providing a, a, a guarantee, essentially, around delivery that's very helpful. Um, they also understand this kind of event and how it runs in this country, and, and that's really useful. Um, so as a, as a supporter, they're, they're a great supporter. They, uh, they're, they're fairly good at what they do. Um, they, their business is supporting these kind of events. And in return, we give them 6% um, of gross income, basically, uh, which is actually not a whole lot. It's a relatively small amount of money from, from the event, uh, and it's factored into our budgets quite, quite easily. Okay, good. That's clear. Thank you. Yeah. The, the, the Drupal Association has toyed with offering that level of support in the past. We've had some events in Australia that have run associated with the DA, um, but it's all done through the US. It's all in US dollars. It's US insurances, uh, and then just not, it's not practical for them to do it. That, so um, the model that most local Drupal associations have followed is to incorporate themselves. So India, Netherlands, a bunch of other places have incorporated their own local associations off their own back. Um, and now the DA has kind of come in off the top of that to say, okay, well, let's all start talking together. Um, let's facilitate collaboration, common best practices, et cetera, et cetera. So they're more facilitating at that level as opposed to getting directly involved. Giving you a bank account. Yeah. Level. We, we would have to incorporate um, We've got about 10 minutes? Yeah. Well, <laughs> um, any last questions or comments? Oh, thank you. Thank you for coming to Drupal South. <laughs> Wouldn't happen without people coming. <laughs> Fiji. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> All right. And, um,